Hi there, my name is Memo. This is my channel, Houseplanty Goodness, and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion. You might be able to see some of it behind me and in front of me today. I like to talk about tropical houseplants. And today's obviously going to be a continuation of the plant review series, and it's for the plant that you can see in front of me here, which I am really surprised I have not done a review on for yet. And this is the Monstera Spur. Peru, or the Monstera, Monstera species Peru. I don't think it has been given a name yet. I think sometimes this was also known as the Monstera carstenianum, but I don't think that is the correct naming for it. I think at the moment it's still called the Monstera spa Peru. Interestingly, when I bought this, it was called the Epipremnum marble planet, but I'll touch on that in just a moment. But before we get into any of this, let's lay down some ground rules. So if you're one of the people that has come back as usual, welcome back. It's nice to have you. You know the deal at this point. If you want to have, if you want to jump essentially to the favorite chapter that you kind of want to see, just go down on the progress bar below and click and you will go in to your favorite section. If you are new, however, welcome to the slight insanity that is this plot review series. <laughs> and the, the kind of ground rules are essentially for the people that are joining for the first time. And I will start this as I always do, which is to say that there is zero way that I can make this review unbiased. It is my biased opinion based on my specific plant growing in my specific conditions. And this specific plant, I've got two, this one lives in my office. So this one doesn't have the high humidity conditions that some of my other plants get to enjoy in here in the conservatory in the UK and all of that uh, that might mean. I do, however, have a second one, which is right in the back of my plant shelf. I'll hopefully be inserting some clips, which is growing in here, and I can benchmark the two against each other. I don't often get this where I've got one plant in here and one in regular household humidity, but this is one that I do have. So bear that in mind. And what I always want to achieve essentially with these plant review videos is for you to leave your own review. If you've already got this plant, if you agree with my experience, if you disagree and you've had different experiences, do drop all of that down below. Hopefully what this will become is a repository of kind of information and kind of reviews of people that have got this plant and how they're growing it in their conditions. I would always encourage you to kind of state kind of what light it's getting, if it's getting any special humidity, any special care that you give it down below, because that will help people go, ah, oh, that's like my conditions or that's like the care that I would give it. That's really interesting, basically. So yeah, but without further ado, let's dive into the first topic. So coming into background with this plant specifically, and I will lift it up and show you, this is looking very pathetic, but this is getting very bad conditions, but it's still growing. Let me show you what the plant looks like up close and you can see those textured leaves. You can also see a vine that doesn't have any leaves on it and I'll touch on that in just a moment. You can also see that it's in terracotta and you can see some of the older, more bleached out leaves. It is in my aroid soil mix. If I can leave, if I can move that leaf, there you go. Um, and I'll put it back here so you should hopefully be able to still see it in screen. It's not a huge plant, so you're not getting the full effect of it. I will add a picture here of the first one that I've got of the two. I don't think I've got a picture. Maybe I do have a picture of both of them actually when I first got them from my plant care app and I will add them here. And I'm looking at the first one because that's the one that's in here. And as I said, this was a plant that I got sold as here in the UK. And I'm assuming this might happen in Europe sometimes as well. Not necessarily as a Monstera, but as an Epipremnum marble planet and obviously that's a commercial name it's not even a common name it's not even an epipremnum it is a monstera now it's interesting because when i first saw this i saw this in the plant shop this is when i was first starting my journey so i would imagine my first plant and the title will have it i've probably had probably over five years now that tells you something and it was a plant that i saw and I, at first view of this plant i was just like that's really ugly why would anybody want that now the interesting thing that's happened and i've touched on this on a very old video and if i can find it i will link it at the top there when i was talking about this plant again is that 
since not picking up that plant and thinking it's really weird looking, I went back home and for days afterwards, I kept dreaming about this plant because obviously subconsciously, yes, I had judged it and said it's a very weird looking plant. Why would anybody want to have it? But subconsciously, I was like, I think I like it. I think I do. And I don't know if anybody has ever had this, not just with plants generally, if it happens like that, and it kind of weighs on your mind. And I went back and got the last one that they had remaining in the store. And at that point, they didn't come out as often. I don't think they do come out as often. But again, we'll talk about this and availability in just a moment. But I did pick it up. So, so happy I did, because this is one of the plants that even now, years later, and you'll discover about all the challenges that I might have had with this plant further on in the video, still rate it and still enjoy it, which is a lot to say after years of owning a plant, whether or not you still enjoy it. It doesn't bring me the sheer level of joy that it did when I first got it, but it still brings you a lot of joy, which is interesting. Again, personal experience with this plant. This is probably not going to be the same for everybody. But yeah, and it was, I just managed to pick it up there. I think this one, specifically the second one, I bought from a local garden center a couple of years later, purely because I enjoyed the first one and I wanted one in a household because it, as I said, the first one is living here in my conservatory. The reason why I didn't have it and hopefully I'll have some clips to add here is that it is right at the back of the plant shelf and it's growing through the plant shelf. And I'm filming quite a few of these videos in advance because I have only just recently been told for the people that have been here for a while, I now have a date for all the windows and doors in the house to be replaced, which is in two days, that's gonna start. And what I hadn't realized until the company chased me up again is that they're replacing the entire conservatory the week after. So <laughs> I am filming a whole bunch of content in here whilst I still can at the moment so I can bring it out for you over the next few weeks because this will be very different in a few weeks time. And yes, before you ask, I will be doing an updated conservatory tour and I'll hopefully take some videos and clips of me clearing the conservatory so they can come in and destroy the whole thing before they rebuild it and me putting everything back. And hopefully at that point, I've learned a lot since being here. I am dreading moving this many plants. Cannot state how much I'm dreading it enough. Um, and it's only going to be for a few days, but I'm literally going to have to disassemble every single plant shelf, take every single plant out move it into different rooms where it probably won't be getting any level of humidity that's that it's used to or light levels for at least three or four days. Does it stress me out? Probably not. I know that most of these plants can do okay for a few days. That should be fine. And then I have to move <laughs> everything and do that in reverse, bringing everything back in. But hopefully at that point, it might mean that I'm going to restructure how I have certain things just so that it's laid out a bit better knowing what I know now after growing in this space for a couple of years and, and where plants are. They're not in the best and most ideal position. Now, that is it in theory. Am I going to get lazy and just probably put back everything into the same place that it is? Maybe. So don't, <laughs> don't hold me to that. I'm going to try. <laughs> yeah, sorry, big tangent. Yeah, I'll hopefully get some clips of the Monsera Spa Peru, the other one, the original one, and put it through basically the same thing. That one's been growing quite happily as well. But I think that's everything I wanted to say on the background section. Let's move into the next topic. So, so this is interesting that we're going into speed of growth for this one, because I will say this. This is definitely not one of my fastest plants. Neither one of those two plants has been both in the conservatory with higher humidity and more ideal conditions. and in the office with less ideal conditions because it's probably not getting as much light as it needs, thus the runners. And it's probably not getting anywhere near the, the kind of humidity that it will also like. This is also an interesting one. I'll touch a bit more about this on care that I keep relatively dry, both of them. I'm trying to think now, no, both are in soil. None of them are in um, semi-hydromics. Yeah, it is a slow plant. It, at least it has been in my experience. Let me know down below, but I think from the previous video and the comments from that one, the kind of feedback from a lot of people was that, yes, it is, a, it is a kind of slow growing plant. The one thing that I have been able to see, and I don't know, I'm trying to think from the comments there, if somebody said that they had seen this, I don't know that I've ever seen mature leaved pictures of this specific 
plant and to see if that kind of was any different. The um, other one that I had was on support sticks. It was on a trellis. It was on a moss pole. Did the leaves get much bigger? I'm thinking kind of Monstera Deliciosa, which you might be able to see behind me there, and change drastically in the way that they look? No, I don't think it does. If anything, I would imagine that texturing that you get on the leaves would maybe flatten out and it might get a bit bigger. But you can also see because of the shape of the leaves why it might have been that growers are calling this an epipremnum. So it does kind of look like it could be an epipremnum leaf. It's that kind of shape that you would imagine that to be the case. But when you actually touch how stiff the leaves are and kind of how rough they feel, you kind of get that it is that, oh no, this might actually be a monstera. The monsteras generally tend to have those slightly more succulent leaves. But yeah, it's not fast. Can't tip it around the topic. It's not fast. This is, I'm trying to see if I can benchmark it now. So against a golden pothos in this conditions here, which again, because I've got the first plant in here, if a uh, golden pothos in the summer months, in a month, it might bring out two or three new leaves. This might bring out one, if I'm lucky. So it, it is relatively slow, basically. So... And as I said, this plant itself is probably, I want to say two, three years old. It's not huge. The other one isn't either. It's vining everywhere. It's, it's living its best life and I'm letting it live its best life. I am completely okay with that. But yeah, it's not a fast growing plant. Does it mean I've enjoyed it less? No, that's the interesting thing. But yeah, this, is, this isn't one if, if you need for it to be growing big and fast and all these things, this isn't one for you. So I would say if you've got a chance to get a very full plant, go for that. Spend a bit more money and go for that if you want that eventually, because if you're getting something smaller and hoping it will be like that in a year or two, that way to disappoint. Again, based on my experience, yours might be different. Let me know. But yeah, slow, slow plant. Ease of propagation with this one, it's relatively been straightforward in terms of propagating. I have done it in sphagnum moss, I've done it in semi-hydro. Semi-hydro was slower, in water it was slower. So I will say damp sphagnum moss or wet perlite in, um, ideally I would say it has done okay in just kind of regular ambient kind of room temperature and room humidity, but it did grow a bit faster and root out a bit faster in something like a propagation box. It kind of needs that extra bump of humidity when it's trying to root out. Did that happen fast? No. Did new stems happen fast? No, again. So it's it's consistent in its lack of speed, <laughs> if that makes sense. It takes its time and it does its thing. And that's completely fine. There is something to be said about those types of plants. Is it as slow as the lupinum, the philodendron lupinum? which I still think is the slowest plant I have ever owned. I don't own that anymore. That, that was just bugging me. No. Is this as slow as a ZZ plant or a cast iron plant? Also, no, it's faster than those. But is it faster than a Sansevieria? Probably on par, if that gives you a bit of a benchmark there in terms of that. Um, but yeah, in terms of ease of propagation, relatively straightforward. It's just that, again, that speed element isn't really there. And yeah, you can grow it and yeah, you can propagate it to kind of grow and that's absolutely fine. It's interesting because I'm looking at another plant that I got as a cutting and that's taking its time, the Monstera pina partita. And when it's got really juvenile leaves, they are almost identical to the Monstera spa peru. And I know the pina partita is harder a lot of the times to come by than the spa peru, at least here in the UK. So bear in mind that you're getting the right thing. I will say I had it as a two leaf cutting the pinapatita. It's still on two leaves. It lost the first two leaves is now on the same two leaves, new two leaves. But I don't think that one grows any faster than that than this. So you can't even benchmark it against it and just kind of say, well, this one's growing super fast. So it's probably the pinapatita and this is growing super slow. So it's the Monstera Spa Peru. At least in my experience, both of them are equally slow. Does the mature form Pinapatita, because that does change its appearance quite drastically, 
Does that grow a bit faster? Possibly, but I don't know. I've never experienced one of those. I do want to get one of those in a more mature form than in the juvenile form because I like the structure of how it grows. Not to say that I dislike the structure of how this grows. But yes, and it does get some like chunky aerial roots. It's not huge. It's nothing to kind of write home about. You can see it there. But yeah, it is one of those things. Does And I also will say, I also found that this doesn't readily, it didn't, for me at least, readily go into a moss pole to kind of attach. So there is that to be said as well. Granted, I wasn't doing moss poles. Probably it was those qua poles that you get from the plant stores a lot of times. Was I keeping it moist? No, that's probably why I didn't attach. So take that with a pinch of salt, basically. So coming into availability for this one, and I've touched on it briefly on some of the other sections. Is this relatively available? And I'm thinking of in the last couple of years, yes, it does come up at least here in the UK, and I would imagine possibly for parts of Europe as well. It comes up a couple of times throughout the year, and I've seen this in plant stores, and I've seen this in garden centers. I don't think I've ever seen this in big box stores here at least, or in supermarkets. And is it cheap? Has the price changed too much? I don't think it's drastically changed. It wasn't expensive when I bought it. So it was kind of very, very low double digits, almost encroaching the single digits. And I don't think that price has fluctuated too much. There might be several reasons for this. It might be that not that many people are aware of this plant. There might be that not that many people are interested in this plant. But I would also imagine that there is going to be a point where we will not, got, and not get any cheaper because if it grows like this for everybody, not just me. So it can be quite slow to get big enough and it can be quite slow in propagating. I would imagine the price won't drop that much because it costs time and money for the growers, the commercial growers to get it to a point where it's ready for sale to be a big and bushy enough plant that people would want to buy. So I wouldn't imagine it's going to get dirt cheap. Like it will probably stay around that same price. I am very curious because I know that some parts of the world, this is almost still considered a difficult plant to come by and it can still have a high cost to it. What's it like where you live? Is this still a plant that's difficult to find or are you finding it a bit more frequently? I'm also really surprised in how many years this has been in the houseplant world. And maybe it's because there's not that many people buying it, I would assume that it still hasn't been given a name, but I know that that works differently. It's kind of when the scientists can get around to it and all these things. But yeah, this isn't a plant that is particularly difficult to come by. You just, you get flushes of it. At least that's been my experience. So when you do find one, if you haven't seen it for a while, just grab it because you're probably gonna have to wait for a bit before the next flush of these plants come out. But yeah, that's, that's what I wanted to say on availability. Now, moving into pests for this one, and it's a Monstera, so can you guess the pest that I'm going to mention here? Thrips. Thrips is one that does like this plant, like it does with most Monsteras, I find. And I think thrips are pretty much, I'm trying to think, have I maybe had spider mites on the back of these leaves? And I'll show you what the back of these leaves are. I'm trying to find one that's like highly corrugated, so you can kind of see and you maybe see the kind of divots and grooves, because obviously if it's bumpy on this side, you'll get those kind of, I don't know how to call them, hollows on the back of the leaves. And anybody who's got leaves like this generally will know the spider mites love those because they can go and congregate in those little hollows, essentially. So occasionally spider mites with this never gets out of control, but thrips is a big one with this one. Have I ever had mealybugs on this? maybe a couple of times but again nothing major i'm thinking that one that's in my conservatory would have maybe had mealybugs at some point but it never got ridiculous basically because again the leaves are so kind of frigid essentially but yeah keep an eye out for thrips with this one and again with any plant that grows as slowly as this one does something like thrips could really set you back not a few months worth of growth a few years worth of growth because if you've lost like half of your foliage because of thrips, that's going to take you a while to 
not just rehab, make sure that the plant doesn't have any thrips, but for it to regrow the same amount of foliage that it's potentially lost. So just keep a kind of eagle eye on any kind of obvious thrip damage on this and make sure that you're dealing with it early enough. So coming into accessories and care with this one, and you've seen it before, as I've showed you, it's in terracotta. I don't think it is. The other one is also in terracotta, and this one and the other one are both in my Aroid soil mix. So that's the thing that's common for both of them. As I said, I don't, I'm trying to think if I've tried growing this in semi-hydro, I think I might have done it. I think it didn't go that well. Something to bear in mind there. But it loves the terracotta pot. This is 100% a plant that I have found can go towards root rot because it's so slow in everything that it does, at least for me. So it takes time to like use up all that moisture. So it's a very airy arid soil mix. It is also in that terracotta and it also doesn't get watered that frequently. And this is 100% a plant that I will let go fully dry before I water it again. And generally that holds true for a lot of my monsteras. And that's the case for both this one that's outside in regular household humidity and the one that's in here with the higher humidity levels. The other thing that I will say is, do I fertilize this? Yes, with both of them, just purely because it makes my life a bit easier. It gets fertilized weekly or whenever it does get fertilized. So whatever water I've got that's still got fertilizer in it, these plants will get, but the level of fertilizer that I use for most of my watering tends to be the level that I would use for semi-hydro with my liquid gold leaf. So it's not an awful lot of fertilizer. Has this ever really shown any signs of distress because of it? No. Has it grown any faster because of it? Also no. But those are the big things. Does, would this maybe appreciate a plank? Yes. Have I grown it on a plank? Did I see much of a difference? Yes and no, I didn't see much of a difference. Would this appreciate something like a trellis? Yes, so that you don't have it hanging down. And you can see this one that I've kind of let trail. The leaves are considerably smaller. So if I bring it in a bit closer, you can see that's one of the big leaves and that's a smaller leaf. You can see there is a size difference. So giving it something that it can attach to, even if it's not rooting into it like a moss pole, will mean that you'll get those slightly bigger leaves. And I, I can confirm that's what I've seen, even when it was on janky support sticks or a trellis where it wasn't, really that the, the aerial roots weren't going into something like a moss pole or even a plank, the leaves still remained relatively large. I don't know if I've ever tried doing that from a leaf that's gone smaller to get it larger again. I don't know. And this, is, well, this wasn't a plant that I was going to spend an awful lot of time trying that with. But yeah, does it need it? No. Would it appreciate it? Probably yes. So that's something to bear in mind, but generally not a particularly fussy plant at all or no real specialist care that is needed check the leaves for pests and predominantly thrips at this point and make sure that it dries out give it a light, lovely lovely airy soil mix and you should be good really light levels of this i've had it in different light levels it didn't do well on super bright indirect light it, this is one that i find tends to do a bit better in medium light conditions. This is in lower light conditions. The other one's in more medium towards bright and direct conditions, and that one's growing a bit faster. Do the leaves bleach out? Yes. If you want the slightly more darker leaves, give it a bit less light, basically. We're coming into final thoughts for this one. And I'll start like I usually do with my final thoughts, and it's a case of knowing what I know now. If I didn't own this plant and I came across it, would I purchase it? A hundred percent. This still brings me so much joy. I cannot tell you how interesting the leaves are because, and I'll see if I, I don't know whether or not it's going to pick up on camera. So you can see some of the lightness on the tops of those kind of peaks and how dark it could be around it. It also looks like it's got nerves. I'm trying to see that you can see the nerves behind it. It's very, very interesting foliage. The one thing I will say, and I'm only just thinking about it now, I've also got the Anthurium luxuriens. And any of the plants that I have that have got relatively thick leaves that have got that kind of bumpiness and that kind of corrugated look to them, 
nearly all of them are quite slow growers. So that is something to bear in mind. And if this holds true for this plant as well. So that's something to bear in mind there. But yeah, I would definitely get this again. It still brings me that much joy. I had to take a little break there because I don't know if that came up on the video, but somebody bing bonged the doorbell and you can tell that we're coming up to local elections soon because there's people canvassing around. So fun times. Um, but yes, so I would say I would definitely get this plant again if I didn't have it because it still brings me a lot of joy. Now, in terms of giving it a score. <laughs> so in terms of giving this a score, I would say that it's, it's going to be a tricky one because I know this isn't going to be for everybody. And there's obviously that speed of growth. For me, this is a plant that I still enjoy thoroughly. So I would go as high as an eight or a nine on this one, if I'm being honest. For everybody else, especially if you want something that's a bit faster, that gets bushy and big and has difference in mature leaves and isn't as temperamental, this will probably realistically be a five or a six, possibly even lower, depending. I'm, I'm curious to see what you're going to say down in the comments below for this one. But yeah, it is, it is one of those things that... As long as you're comfortable with some of the issues, they're not really issues, but some of the kind of idiosyncrasies that I've said about this specific plant, and you're okay with that, this is going to be a plant that you're going to love. If any of those points, specifically the fact that it can be quite slow growing, is going to be an issue for you, it's probably going to be a low scoring plant for you. It just kind of makes sense in that respect. But yeah, overall, a plant that I still enjoy many years later and the fact that I still do, I, doesn't, I don't think this is going to be a plant that's going to, I'm going to fall out of love with anytime soon. But yeah, I think that's everything I wanted to say. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Hopefully I shall see you here soon. And I hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.